Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at the Disco Diffusion notebook. Um, it's made by this person, Sumni Dreams. Uh, that's their Twitter handle. Um, I believe this is also their GitHub handle. Uh, and what's really cool about this notebook is it uses what is called a diffusion model. Um, a diffusion model is a different type of image generator. Uh, if you've seen VQGAN or um, you know StyleGAN as a type of image generator, a diffusion model is slightly different, and it uses a different operation than, say, StyleGAN or another type of GAN model. Um, I'll get into some of the intricacies of it, um, but I think it actually produces some really nice high quality images. Um, there's some other really nice things about this notebook that we'll cover as we go through it, um, but I'm also going to show you how to start with an initialized image. So in this uh, tutorial what we'll do is we'll take an initialized image, we'll use that as a starting point for uh, running our diffusion model. Um, it won't necessarily operate like a, stat, like a style transfer does, but it kind of has some similar ideas in that it sort of starts with the initial image and then changes it over time. So with that, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and connect. Uh, make sure your runtime is set to GPU. I believe uh, by default it probably will be. We'll go ahead and hit save, and then we'll hit connect. All right. Um, if, so there are some tutorial elements here. There's a nice list of uh, a table of sort of various options. Um, but as it notes, this is out of date as a V2. Um, I found some of the things still exist, and they're helpful to read and sort of understand. Um, but hopefully, I'll cover some of the bigger ones um, as we go through the notebook. Uh, so first off, let's just check to see what GPU we got. I have a V100. Um, again, this is probably because I'm on Pro Plus. If you're using something else, you might get a P100, um, a K80, a T4. Um, I think the only one you might run into issues with is a K80 because it's like 12 gigabytes of memory um, of, sorry, of VRAM. Um, and that might run into issues depending on what size you're trying to uh, generate for the image. Um, next, I highly recommend running this. Uh, you can turn it off if you're just demoing this. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to create a folder in your Google Drive account, and it's going to save some of the model checkpoints there. That's really nice because sometimes with these models, it can run pretty slowly. Um, I'm going to use a really low res version for this just so we've got uh, it runs relatively quickly. Um, but if you're running a bunch of batches, um, you definitely want to save to drive so you don't lose your work if your machine shuts down. The other thing is that uh, if you choose to run this notebook again, it'll pick up the checkpoints, um, your, your diffusion model files um, that have been saved to drive. Makes setting up and running the notebook a little bit quicker. So I recommend running this if you can. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Connect to Google Drive. And we'll just click that account and hit allow. And while that runs, I'm just going to go ahead and click the each play icon here. And that's just going to set up and install a bunch of my defaults. So you'll see already here it, it's looking for um, some of the initialized folders and things, and I've already got those. Um, if this is your first time reading the notebook, it might need to build these and set up a little bit more, and it might take a little bit longer to get set up. All right, so while that is running, why don't we go ahead and open up to and look at the diffusion and clip model settings. So here's where you actually specify the model that you're going to use to generate images. Um, pretty much everyone that I've seen uses the 512. Obviously, it's a little bit higher resolution. You'll probably get some nicer images out of it. Um, I guess you could go ahead and try the 256 and see what that looks like. Um, but in general, I see everyone uses the 512. Um, I leave all of these checked on. Um, the secondary model, I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly what that does. I believe it might use a second model for clip or like use a, a second generator. Um, you can kind of combine these uh, models together and maybe get slightly better results. That's what all of these checkboxes are here. If you've done anything with clip before, um, you'll know that these are the names of different clip models. Uh, one of the things that people have found in the past, I don't know, six months or so, is actually running multiple models um, during your losses using multiple models gets you better results. Uh, I think it's fine to just leave these three or four on. Um, obviously, the longer or the more of these you have running, uh, the more memory it'll take. So you probably need a nice uh, V100 if you're going to turn them all on. You might not even be able to get away with that, but you can try it anyway. Um, I think we can start with just these three uh, by default that were checked on, and maybe you want to play around and try uh, turning on some of the other ones. Um, this is only only check this box if you're having issues with model downloads. Um, I haven't experienced that yet, but you can try it. Uh, but for the most part, this is probably ready to go. So we'll go ahead and hit play here. So I actually didn't change anything. I just want to talk through those settings. And now we've got the basic settings. So this is really where uh, we want to do the the most of our work is we're going to do most of the setup for our model. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click on the folder and I'm going to upload an image here. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click this button, which allows me to upload an image. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I create a nice little image. See, I've got floral in it. So we open this. This is just a floral image. Um, I recommend playing with a bunch of different starting images. I tend to like uh, some of these contrasty black and white images. And, I'll, and we'll see why when we actually start running the, the diffusion model. Um, but you can play with things and see what you get. This, I believe, I'll need to check the size of this image. But um, this is, I believe, something like 360 by 720 or something. So we'll go ahead and upload this. And actually, while I'm here, let me just double click that and open and see what size that image is. So that is 540 by 360. So um, before I talk about these two, I'm just going to put in this number so I can remember it, which was, what was it? It was 540 by 360. Okay. So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to give our runtime a name. This is just going to basically create a folder in our Google Drive to allow us to save out images. Um, I recommend creating a unique name so you just remember what it is. So we'll just do floral init demo um, steps. So steps is how long this model is going to run for. Um, so each step you'll have, it'll generate a new image and it'll process it through clip to generate the loss. And then it'll run again and again and again. So it's going to be an iteration. Um, the longer you run this for, uh, first off, the longer it's going to take to run, it's going to be slower. So if you set it to 5,000 steps, it's going to take quite a while. Um, the other thing is that the longer you run it, more likely the better results you get, but that's kind of like, uh, you'll see diminishing returns on that. Um, if you set it to 1,000 versus 2,000, 2,000 will likely get you some finer detail. But if you set it between 2,000 and 10,000, the detail is going to be very, very slight for the amount of like length of time it takes. So I recommend maybe starting with something like 500 or 1,000. And if you decide like, oh, I want a little bit more from it, I can play with that. So we'll start with 500. Um, I've already gone ahead and set the width of the height, the width and the height. So this is how um, this is the dimensions of the image we're going to generate. And I wanted to set it to the same as my initialized image, just so it sort of kept the same dimensions and proportions. Um, clip guidance scale, this is uh, the value, basically this is how strong um, the clip guidance should work. This will also um, play in part next to the uh, image settings. Um, so I would just recommend leaving this at 5,000. Um, actually, we're going to leave all of these other settings at these values. Um, I believe all of these are, are mentioned and discussed in that tutorial um, at the top. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about these, uh, you can go ahead and do that. I've played with a couple of these a little bit, but I haven't found huge changes um, in my image generation, but you can check that out. Uh, one other note is that if you do find you're getting out of memory errors, you can try playing with this number, the cut and batches. If you make this like two, you might get better as you might have it work on something like a K80. But um, in general, I would start by leaving it at four and see how it goes. Um, and then we've got initialized settings here. So we've got our initial image. So what I want to do instead of none is I want to replace it with my path here. So I'm going to click on floral in the image. I'm going to right click on it and click copy path. And then I'm going to paste that path in here. So this should just point to your image. Um, initialize scale. So this is uh, balanced out by this. So this is going to say this value is how strong should the clip, um, the text prompt uh, manipulate the image. And this is how strong should the initial image control the parameter. Um, so let's just leave it at 5,000 and 1,000 and see how it is. Now, the last thing we want to make sure we do, um, this is where it's kind of interesting how a diffusion model works. So a diffusion model starts with noise. It starts with like complete noise. And over the 500 steps that we've set it to here, um, it's going to become less noisy and more of what our image, our initialized image and our text prompt are. Because of that, if you leave this at zero, um, you will always start with noise. So what you actually want to do is we want to actually skip ahead um, a number of steps so that we start with this image and then begin to pick up the text prompt. So uh, actually, uh, the, the author of this notebook was kind enough to sort of respond and said, like, a good value to start with is half of your total steps. So we'll start with 500 steps, but we'll actually jump to 250 and use this image at that point. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense if we actually see it running, but I highly recommend that you just start with this value. You could play with this a little bit more um, after you've sort of like iterated a little bit and learned a little bit more about this. So we've got all our settings here. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. That makes sure we're just saving it to our runtime. And then we are going to come down here. Uh, I don't 
for this video, I'm not going to cover any video settings. Um, so I believe we can just hit play here and this will just save all the pre-settings in here um, so it won't work with animation at all. Um, extra settings. So there are a couple things in here. Um, intermediate save, uh, we could play with this. This will basically, as the model runs, um, if we want to save out three middle iterations, um, this is a good thing if you're doing a really long run because maybe you don't actually like the 5,000th five, the 5, step of your image. Uh, maybe what you really want is the 3,000th step. So what you might want to do in here is set uh, your intermediate saves to four. So I think that'll save one at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Um, in this case, it would be 100, 200, 300, 400, and then 500, which is the final step. Um, because I'm doing such a short run, I'll just save this as uh, intermediate steps to be one. So we'll get 250 and then we'll get 500. Um, and then I'll save to a subfolder. Um, we can leave super edge sharpening off, uh, but this is something where after the image finishes, you could do a little bit of sharpening on it, whatever you want to do there. Uh, if you're using initialized images, make sure no matter what that this is turned off. If this is turned on, um, it's going to override your image setting, um, and you don't want that happening. So make sure that you have this unchecked. And we can skip the rest of this. Let's go ahead and run this. And then we're almost finished here. So this next uh, item here is actually where we put in the text prompt. Um, I've covered a lot of videos on how to do text prompts um, and you know text prompt engineering. Uh, so I won't cover a lot of that. I will recommend that you go check out some of the other videos on how to do pre text prompt engineering, which is basically like you know putting in some hacks into your text prompt um, so that you get slightly nicer images or a certain stylistic kind of style to it. Uh, the the interesting thing to note here is that. Um, Part of this, you can set up multiple text prompts. I would assume this is more for the animation method. So this number here says, starting at what step in the image um, do you want to change out the prompt? So I actually don't want any prompt uh, to change. I'm just going to use one prompt. So I'm going to comment out the 100 here. And I'm just going to use 0. And let's come up with a prompt for this. So you can also pass in multiple prompts using uh, this um, comma, like, Basically, everything goes in a string, and you can comma separate them. I'm only going to use one prompt for this, and let's just go ahead and put this in here. So um, let's see. So why don't we do this? Why don't we do a colorful pattern of goldfish um, and then trending on art station? That seems fine. So uh, trending on art station is, this, is a fairly popular um, text prompt or a text engineering prompt. That kind of generates some like cool like RGB-ish like uh, phase shifted color in it. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I want to take my image here, and what I'm hoping I can do is I can turn the flowers sort of into goldfish shapes. Um, so let's see if this actually works. I have no idea if it will. Um, so now that we've got this set up, we also want to turn off image prompt, which is already there. Um, Image prompting is you can also prompt it by saying, I want my images to look more like this image. So that's different than, init than the initialized image. Initialized images are what image do I want to start with. An image prompt image is uh, what image do I want my final output to look more like. Um, it's noted here that image prompts work but aren't very good. So I'm just not going to cover it here. So it's already commented out. So now I'm set up here so I can go ahead and hit play. And finally, we're ready to get started here. Um, so we can actually run the diffusion. So a couple notes here. So the display rate is how often my Colab notebook is going to update my image. Um, because my image is running for 500 steps, if I set the display rate to 50, that means I'm only going to see, you know, at 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, up to 500. Um, I like to set this a little bit lower if I'm going to actually sit around and watch it. Uh, it's just nice because it updates a little bit faster for you. Um, I would say if you're going to walk away and like let it run overnight, you could probably set it to like 100, 300, whatever, um, and it'll be fine. End batches is how uh, how many images you want to create. So if you want to create 10 different images that you can sort of test, because again, remember there's some noise built into these models, um, and see how the noise, you know, randomness affects your your images. Um, you can set like 10, and that'll generate 10 images. Now it'll take 10 times as long because you're generating 10 different images. So for this, I'm just going to set it to one. Um, so we just generate one image. Uh, I have not turned on any of these other features yet, but I assume you could pick up from uh, a previous uh, run, other things like that. So uh, maybe play around with these if you're interested in setting that. But this is a basic demo, so let's just go ahead and run this because I've now been talking for quite a while. So we'll just hit run. And you'll see here that we are now starting with our name. 
and we are starting at frame 0. And this usually takes a couple seconds to get started. And once it gets started, we should begin to see our images. Now, um, here's the, fun the funny sort of thing to remember is because we said we want to start our initialized image at 250 out of 500, what you're seeing here is that it actually jumps all the way to 250, um, and it now only has 250 steps to generate. This is why you want to start with initialized image at and have some value of steps in there. If you don't have any value, it's going to immediately show you noise. Um, one other thing you should note is that because this is a diffusion model, um, this image is, oh, that's not the right button to hit. Uh, I want this image. So this image is not the same as this, right? Like because of how diffusion models work, you're still seeing sort of the middle progress of this diffusion model. It's just started with this image. Um, and it's, you know, kind of blurred out and a little bit uh, noisy. And that's how diffusion models work. But you can already see we're already maybe 50 steps into my model, and you can already see how certain elements are starting to become goldfish. So we'll see how long this uh, runs for. Um, it's helpful to note here that you will see there is a little update here. Uh, this value means how long has the model been running for, and how long do we expect it to take. So this is saying it's going to take about another four minutes to run. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will stop the recording, and when it's finished, I'll come back and we can take a look at our final image result. All right, so that did take about five minutes for that to run. Um, and here's my final image. So here is the image I started with. And using that as the initialized image and running for 250 steps, here is where I ended up with my goldfish. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool looking image. It's pretty interesting. But I would definitely say that I don't necessarily see a lot of goldfish in here. So if I wanted to improve on this image, uh, there's a couple things I could do. One is I could just try to create a better text prompt. Uh, I have a feeling that like my text prompt wasn't really that great. I might play around and try to generate uh, different phrasing, different sort of sequencing, or maybe koi fish instead of goldfish, those sort of things. Um, but let's say I'm really stuck with this with this text prompt and I really want to make it work. Um, there's a couple of things I might recommend doing. So let's go all the way back up to our settings. And let's start with uh, the steps. So, um, and maybe just for my own sanity's sake, I want to go and hit uh, demo too. So we'll rename, we'll rename the folder. Um, the first thing you can always try is to increase the number of steps. So if I double my number of steps, uh, that will run for twice as long, um, and I will hopefully get a better result. Uh, so let's start with that. Now remember, because we change our steps here, we very likely want to change our steps down here as well. Um, so again, just using that half rule, I'm just going to set this to 500. Now you might be saying, well, now this is 500, and this is 100 or 1,000, so aren't you like still not running it for very long. So the truth is I'm running it for 500 steps total because 1,000 minus 500 equals 500. So it's now running for 500 steps, which is double than what I was previously running it for. So now it's going to take probably like 10 minutes. So, you know, I'm doubling the length of time, but I'm hopefully going to generate a different image. But now I'm definitely creeping into a territory where it's getting harder and harder. Like, like I won't just want to sit here and watch this thing run. I'll probably want to go do something else. So just be aware of that. Um, the other thing that you could try to do is you could lower your initialized scale or increase the clip guidance scale. So again, remember that these are sort of um, proportional to each other. So this is saying, you know, I want the weight of clip guidance to be 5,000, and I want the initialized image to be 1,000, meaning I want, you know, essentially I want the clip score to weigh heavier 5 to 1. So we could actually like cut this in half. I mean, we'll do both and see what happens. So we'll cut this into 500, and we'll leave this at 5,000. And we'll just sort of see if we're able to um, generate a slightly stronger, more goldfish-like image. So we'll go ahead and run these ba these basic settings again. Um, I don't think we need to run these other cells anymore because we're not changing anything. Um, and then we'll go ahead and just because I'm a little, you know, I like to make sure I'm if I've saved everything correctly. I'll save. I'll rerun the text prompt just to be sure it's saved. And now we'll go ahead and do the run here again. And what I will do is I'll pause the recording again, and then we'll come back, and we'll see if this actually helped. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so I let this run now for 500 steps, and here you'll see my final image. Um, it's interesting because I actually thought as this was going, this fish here in the middle was looking really good. Uh, and then I walked away for five minutes and came back, and I don't like this image much more than the other one. So <laughs> again, maybe 
maybe I really need to work on the text prompt. Um, but this is also a good case where maybe I want to go and see what my uh, middle steps look like. So remember how up here I set a uh, intermediate save of one. So if we go in here and I go drive, my drive, this gets saved in a folder called AI. If you open that, you'll see in there Disco Diffusion, and you'll see images out. And you'll see in here I have Floral Init Demo 2. And then if we just make this a little bit bigger, see I have zero. So I guess maybe because I set it to one. Oh, probably because I set it to one, I didn't actually get a intermediate image. But if I go ahead and click in here, I should just see this final image. So that's on me. I probably should have set this to be a, a value of two. So again, maybe I just need to run this again and again. This is also a case of where maybe I just want to set up some batches and maybe different batches will hit. One will hit really well and one won't. That's been my experience before as well, is sometimes because of how these models work with some noise in them, um, sometimes, you know, it really grapple, it grabs onto that that fish image and really is able to generate, and then other times it can't. So, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to play with this, but in general, I would say, you know, that's pretty fast. You get a nice looking image in 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, if I were to play with different prompts, I could, might get a better image. Um, but I like the look of being able to start with an initialized image and, and it starts to generate from that and it kind of keeps a little bit of that flavor. So um, I hope with this tutorial you've at least learned a little bit about how to use diffusion models um, and how to use initialized images and I've started to have a little bit of fun. If you do make something cool, let me know. Um, and if not, I will see you next time. Thanks again.